Hi, my name's Keith Cooper. Um, I'm a professional architectural, industrial, commercial photographer. Somebody asked me just recently, and it's a question I've been asked quite a few times over the years, why don't you use Nikon cameras and lenses? Now, notice I have to say up front, I'm in the UK, so we call it Nikon. Call it whatever you like elsewhere in the world, but it's Nikon here. Uh, people will know what you mean. Uh, is have i got something against it uh, against the company have i got something against their products what they do uh no um i happen to currently use canon 5ds in fact the question i was asked is why am i still using a five canon 5ds camera that dates from 2015. um the answer is not a simple one i have no great preferences i don't follow brands much never have done it's about the results it's about the best tool for the job for myself so therefore i'm not saying that what i use is absolutely the best solutions for it it's what works for me however in the years since i took up professional photography which is about 2004 so you know coming out nearly 20 years I have more and more appreciated that it is about the lenses. Camera bodies come and go, it's about the lenses. So that's what I think overall. Quick history of how I arrived at various bits and pieces here uh, that I think is important if you're thinking either of changing systems, uh, looking for a new system to go for. Um, I'm never going to make recommendations. So even though I use all this Canon gear here, I'm not going to say, yes, you should use a Canon camera or something like that. This is what I use and the reasons I use it. Hopefully will it be of some interest. Now, back in 2004, when I was thinking of taking up photography professionally, there was a matter of getting a camera, a sufficiently good camera for it. Now, the camera I got was this one here. It's a Canon 1DS. It's a full frame. It's 11 megapixels. Now, that seems ridiculous these days, 11 megapixels. But it's full frame. The pixels were big. It had its foibles. You had to be careful with exposure and things. I've got lots of articles. i put a few links to articles I've written over the years addressing this subject. But um, basically, I got a lot of use out of this uh, Canon 1DS here. Uh, never had any big problems with it. I say it could be you if you wanted to open up the shadows and things like that. Compared to modern files, it's, it shows its age. This picture, for example was taken uh, in Colorado. Uh, this is looking towards Great Sand Dunes. It's across a uh, sagebrush, which is just starting to show some green on it. There's some cottonwood trees just shart starting to show early flash of green on them. And there is a storm front coming in. Uh, this was taken in Colorado in 2004, or it might have been 2005. I can't remember offhand. I'd need to check the files for it. But this was taken on this Canon 1DS with this the 70 to 200 is lens 2.8 l um, that's it i can still get a great print i've got lots of images that i can still get great prints off from that and the key there is keep your raw files and at the time get the best glass you can afford and this was at the time this was probably about 13 1400 pounds so an expensive lens one that's given me a lot of service. Now it's got new versions of it. I never bothered with the new versions because I don't use it that often. And this one is good enough, even on this camera here on the 5DS. I hear people saying, oh, horror of horrors. Um, things have come on so far. You should get better lenses as well. Yeah, it's about the lenses and what you do with them. That doesn't mean that the lenses have to be perfect in some way. Um, there are optically better lenses. Would it have enabled me to take a better picture? No. It was being there, it was seeing the shot, it was taking it. That's the important bit. Um, just so happened that I took it with this particular camera here. Now, lenses at the time I got. Why did I go for the 1DS, the Canon, rather than what were Nik uh, Nikon's options at the time? Well, I have I've always had a liking for wide angle photography. Um, this was before I really established the business. This was early on. Um, so this is this is a holiday snap. Um, so this one's a holiday snap. This was taken with a tilt shift lens on uh, the 5DS here. But that was taken just, you know, just out and about, just taking some nice pictures that have made, stood the test of time. I still like this print a lot. Hangs up downstairs. Um, 
So I got the 1635 2.8L, yeah. Um, on a full frame sensor, that gives you 16 millimeter, which is very wide. So it gives you a very wide lens. At the time, there was Nikon marketing that actually said, yeah, full frame, you don't really need it. Um, you, can, you can do all you want with a, a smaller sensor. You don't need the big sensor. And in fact, if you went for the higher speed versions of these one series cameras, you've got a APS-H crop sensor camera, not as small as APS-C, but halfway between almost. And that was popular then. As sensors became more advanced and it became easier to make larger sensors, full frame appeared. Uh, Nikon eventually bought out full frame cameras, but that wasn't there at the time when I was looking. So that, if you really want to push back, how far, why did I start off with Canon gear? So that's one bit. I mentioned the lenses. I also at the time, and we're talking 2003, 2004, I looked at the lens mounts that were available. Nikon had the F mount, which they carried on quite a while up until the switch over to mirrorless, whereas Canon had the EF mount. Now I've got a technical engineering scientific background. I looked at the mounts and I thought the F mount shows its age. This is, this is 20 years ago, the F mount shows its age. The EF mount has got lots of potential um, I could see optically why, as being a bigger mount, it was potentially better in going forward with changes in lens design, even back then. So I had a dislike, and it wasn't as strong, because I wasn't based on experience of using them, but just from you know, technical and optics looking at it, I felt that the, old, the F mount had its was development was limited by its size and how small it was whereas the EF mount being electronic had more potential now you can see how they changed if you look at the history of lenses in the last 20 years from Canon Nikon before they switched to mirrorless you can see that uh, how that played out um, F mount there are some great lenses and I've tested some great lenses uh, but I'll, I'll come back to that as well but at the time looking at it I could see a potential technical advantage over it. I wasn't de interested in the precise sort of levels of micro contrast, um, distortion and things. They were less important when I was looking at lenses because I thought they're much of a muchness. And yeah, it, it's still for general purpose lenses. Um, all, lots of companies make good lenses. Nikon make good lenses, Canon make good lenses, but for what I was interested in. Now, if we move forward a little bit, 2007, I got this, the 21 megapixel 1DS Mark III. Nice camera. I used this right the way through till 2015 when I got this 5DS. In fact, I was a little disappointed they didn't bring out a high megapixel version of this because I do like using the big solid cameras like this. The batteries on them are great. Um, it took me a while to get used to using a smaller camera like this, uh, but this 1DS uh, Mark III, 21 megapixel, worked a treat. Nothing that Canon bought out made me think, oh, I have to get rid of this and get a newer one. Not until they bought out this. So I got eight years of use out of this one. I got about four years of use out of this one eight years out of this one and this one well it was 2015 and I'm still using it so there we go that's eight years currently use out of this what has changed in the time the lenses 2007 Canon bought out the new TSE 24 lens TSE 17 lens if you compare these with the older and there was no there was no ultra wide one like this but it's certainly if you compare the, this lens here the TSE 24 mark two with the original one this is better in many respects optically it's easier to use by the time i got this i was doing far more architectural industrial work and i was starting to use shift lenses a lot uh, this eventually led a few couple of years ago to me writing this book on tilt shift lenses uh, covers all different lenses how to use them and stuff but the key is the tilt shift lenses now I've got other stuff as well. There's Canon MPA65 macro lens. I use that for macro photography. There's all kinds of bits of it. It's the lenses I use. Now, there are alternatives. I could get something like something similar to this. And there's, uh, there's a fish eye there I can get. And an original TSE 90. Um, 
very similar in some ways to the uh, PCE85 from, from uh, Nikon, but this has been updated. Um, so this is the original TSE 90 millimeter from the 1990s. Nikon have not updated their tilt shift lenses. So um, at the moment, there is a clear lead in terms of lens availability for the kind of work I do, for tilt shift lenses particular. Now, it turned out after I'd got the, written the book, uh, Nikon the in the UK were happy to lend me stuff to have a look at. So I was able to fill in some of the missing reviews of, uh, of Nikon lenses, particularly the 24mm and the 19, the PCE 19. Excellent lens, really nice quality, um, easily on a par with this one here, the 17. A little bit, yeah, the, the focal length doesn't make that much of a difference. So, yeah, got a great lens. So here was the question someone was asking me, why didn't I switch over to Nikon? Because of the cameras they've got. Uh, now, I tried uh, the Nikon lenses. I tried them with adapters on a Z7 um, because, you know, we'd moved to mirrorless then. They were great. I really not liked the Nikon Z cameras that I tried. But I've got all of this stuff here that's built up that is useful, that I know what they do. I know how they contribute. To get rid of, I, well, I can't replace some of these uh, lenses. So I can't replace the 17mm. The 19's close, but it's not 17mm. The 24, now the PCE 19, is a nice new modern lens. It's a little struck by having to use the F mount. If it was on the Z mount, it would be a stunning lens, but the, the, the F mount, the aperture, the opening of it is just a little bit small. And when you're shifting a lens around the front, that makes a difference for it. Causes issues with people use, trying to use something like the TSE 17 on some Sony cameras because of the mount design. This is why I'm, I'm sure of it, why Nikon went when they went the Z mount. Right, that's it. Throw the F mount out. We are going. Hole in. It's a huge mount. It's a really nice lens mount. It offers Nikon ongoing so much in lens design capabilities. The RF mount is a version of the EF mount. Um, it's good. It's it's got capabilities and Canon say that it's so they can develop it. And I've seen the RF mount lenses, which are very good. So if I'm buying stuff now and I was starting this, I'd be much more evenly matched. Now, at the moment, there are no RF mount tilt shift lenses and there are no Z mount PCE lenses. Given the kind of work I do, that means I'm disinclined to change now. Apart from the fact that, yeah, I use this, uh, this uh, 5DS, I've tested uh, an R5 and I've, I, I put some links to uh, some of the testing and some of the more detailed stuff in the, in the notes for this. I've tested R5 and it's not good enough, or I should say it's not a, enough of a difference from it and this for the sort of work I do that I would switch over to it. And there's always that proviso. This is based on the sorts of photography I do. It's not based on, if you want to do nature photography, sports photography, it's not based on any of those. It's purely based on the sorts of photography I do for that. So to answer the original question, why don't I use Nikon cameras? Well, um, I have nothing against them. It is the current lens choice and the kit I've got means I'm likely to carry on using this. Now, there's a possibility if Canon don't come out with something, um, a, a replacement for this in a way, a, a, an R5 with you know, higher megapixel, I might even switch over to using something like Fuji medium format because I can use adapters with all of these lenses. I've got potentially 50 megapixel or 100 megapixel with it. Um, I don't want to do that at the moment because I'm keen to see what Canon might bring out. Now, if Canon bring out a whole series of updated RF mount tilt shift lenses, that for me suddenly swings it very much in staying that direction. I have, just because I've got a pile of Canon kit here, doesn't mean I'm a member of the Canon Supporters Club. I get at camera clubs occasionally, people going, ah, oh, you're, you're, it's a Canon man, 
or, you know, so, as if it makes a difference. It genuinely makes not one jot of difference what the name on the front of the camera is. Um, certainly not for taking photographs. It's been any advert you look for uh, a camera maker uh, that shows some pictures. What you're seeing is the result of using a specific lens. You could have taken that picture on any one of a number of different cameras and there are virtually no differences between them. Yes, there are features, pluses in one, minuses in another, and go for it. But it's not enough that I'm particularly bothered by it. And there is one thing that sits over all of this that certainly since the pandemic, our cash flow as a business has not been healthy enough for me to just go out and go, why, yes, I'll, I'll replace all of these and um, you know, we'll, we'll get some new kit. Swapping kit, jumping backwards and forwards between systems is rarely a good idea. Um, some people think, well, uh, yeah, I, I don't like the fact that such and such has produced a better camera. Well, wait a year and the other company will have leapfrogged them or something like that. Um, there really is not that. It's about what you want to take the photos of. Now, it's something I always cover when I'm looking at printing and things like that. It doesn't really matter what I took the photos with. I have some prints here for that I took, uh, one on a Fuji um, 100 megapixel, one on a Hasselblad 50 megapixel. And the prints, they're both about 25 by 17 inch prints, and they look very similar. Um, that's because really those prints are about what I decided to take the photo of, how I processed it, how I printed it. Um, yeah, the, the cameras, the lenses were not quite, but almost incidental to that. So I hope that makes some sense for, for people. And I get asked this an awful lot. Have I got something against Nikon by not using them? No, I haven't. I really like Nikon cameras that I've used. In fact, the only company that has never ever contacted me, and I've got lots of companies that contact me and various stuff, is Sony. Um, I've just never had a chance to use any of their stuff. So um, I say I draw a veil over that and say I have no comment on their stuff because I just never used it. Now, you could say if I'm using um, some of the medium format cameras, I'm using a Sony sensor, but there is so much more goes into a camera system than just the sensor behind it. And there's, there's a vast amount. The center is one element in it. So I will carry on using these for the time being. Uh, somebody cares to send me a winning lottery ticket. I'm sure I would replace some of these and update stuff and have some interesting kit to play with. But it would be that. It would be interesting kit to play with. It would not necessarily be the stuff. That's, the stuff on this table here is what has earned me a living for at least 15 years. Um, now, is it time to change? I don't think so yet, but um, I'm always open to being convinced. Hope that's of interest. Uh, please do ask questions on it. Have a look at the notes as well, because I'll put some links to stuff I've done in the past looking at different systems, if you're curious about more details about this. And um, as I say, ask away. Thanks for watching, and please do subscribe to the channel. It's appreciated. Thank you.